Well, Robert Rodin, we got a great interview today. Oh, this is a milestone, my brother. We have two young men who have just put a whole new spin on the good news of Jesus Christ. Yes, they took some took some 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 hits from the church world, but they still standing like true champions. Because with God before you, who can be against you, ladies right. and gentlemen? We have two of the most amazing voices of our time, the Dawkins and Dawkins brother, Anson and Eric. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. Now, I want to first start off by saying, um, don't interrupt me. Now, I done told you, I I just had to ask a question. I was just saying what? (laughs) Okay, but it wasn't to you. (laughs) My Jesus. Okay, it just don't make no sense. Hallelujah. You know, yes, yes, uh, yes. I'm, I'm going to try to get through this interview. Uh, praise the Lord, everybody. God bless you. <laughs> now you want to be deep. You know? and <laughs> uh, praise the Lord. God bless you. So good to see you on this morning. Eric, I don't know who you putting on chapstick for, but all the women is up there saying, put that chapstick on, Eric. Put that chapstick on. Listen, <laughs> he's married. Hallelujah. So we rebuke those spirits. Well, first of all, first of all, let him answer. My wife would tell me to put it on, so I don't want to hear her mouth because she'll step in here in a minute like your lips, your lips. So I, you know, I keep it right. <laughs> well, well, praise the Lord. She's Thank looking at your lips still. You right. know what I'm saying? You know, that's a blessing when when your wife still see you and everything <laughs> that like part. that. Yeah. yeah. Amen. You know, Amen. Uh, uh, Anson, I, I'm really feeling the studio, especially that icon. It was an iconic ball or whatever. You know, everybody get Chaotic. it. Yeah. Chaotic. How you like it? I love. I love it. Okay, okay. It works well. Like, he, he got see, my turn. See, Eric, see, see, y'all, y'all I'm gonna, playing. I'm going to be out there. I'm going to go in yeah, my other well, studio. He had it first. So and and the manager like, probably got one, too. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to go in my <laughs> studio, too, and bring mine out so I can put it right here. <laughs> Told you the manager got one, too. <laughs> see, look at you. Look at you. Chris, you got one, too? Now, now Cash, you can question. I'm not starting nothing. I just want to ask questions. You ain't starting nothing? Okay. <laughs> Eric, why, why are you the only one got red? Because I'm different. Okay, okay. And he's covered in the blood. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey! Shanda da da batata. Come on. Praise the Lord. I felt that in my back. Well, well. with that being said, Robert, do you going to start off this interview or you want me to start it off? Because, you know, I don't want to be interrupted no more. So just... we, we already started off. We, we're okay, amongst we got... our brethren. Okay. We, we can be who we is. Okay. Hallelujah. Look, you, know, you, just, you didn't, just bring, for, you just you didn't people, bring me no, no wits and You know what mood I'm in? I do okay. have a blue. Okay, okay. You see, I'm with you, my friend, because, you know, I got those multiple colors because, you know, artists got special needs sometimes, and they'd be like, I don't feel the red. Can I have the blue? And sometimes when they get done, it needs to be a change. Yes. Yeah. And a wash. Change the atmosphere. Yes. Change the That right there. (laughs) All right, my friends. You guys have been rocking uh, in the gospel community for years uh, we have been playing you ever since we've been on radio. We've been on radio uh, uh, now uh, for over uh, 15 years in the radio industry. Mm. And every time that you guys come out with something, we're rocking it. Tell us, being icons and veterans in the industry, not just in gospel, but across the industry, mm-hmm. how have you kept your stay in power? Kick it here. <laughs> I think um, us trying to be relevant would have probably derailed us, but we do the opposite. Like we don't we don't do the trendy thing, try to listen to what's going on now and pattern our music after that. We just stay true to who we are, and authenticity is really important to us. Like so, we we um, we try to make sure that we're we're being obedient to God and. You know, allowing him to download whatever it is he wants us to put out there, and I think that's what's um, really attributed to our, our longevity. And you know, thirty years in the 30. industry, thirty years. So, and we love what we do as well. So, yeah, yeah. Well, go ahead. Well, how did it feel coming out when you came out, and um, like the commissions and? like the whinings, people that were before us, there's always these groups and soloists who set a new bar. How did you guys feel when everybody wasn't as accepting? Well, that was that was particularly challenging uh, when we first came out because we were a lot younger. Had uh, We had uh, 
I would say, you know, these these illusions of grandeur, you know, things that were that we were hoping and things that we thought were going to happen, and uh, things were a lot different. So it it caught it caught us by surprise on some some ends, uh, but thankfully we had uh, we had strong uh, strong support systems around us, whether it be the guys that from commission, uh, whether it be some other artists that we were connected to that just took us, you know, that just uh, embraced us as well. But uh, our families, you know, mom and dad, you know, some extended family, they were the ones who, you know, our church family prayed for us and supported us and kept encouraging us. Um, we, there were, I won't say that there, there weren't days when we, you know, felt like uh, this is this is for the birds. You know, we mm -hmm. can, you know, forget you. We could do something else. Right. You know, but what God placed in our heart, we wanted to uh, continue to do, and it was just like a part of us. We were raised in it, so it's like it was like a part of us, and we were just, we were just like uh, we go, we're going to continue to move forward, see what happens, and and by the grace of God, you know, we're still here doing it and uh, experiencing, you know, some, so, you know, some levels of, of success with it, but more, more so than that, uh, full, fulfilling purpose that God, God has placed in us. Well, well, brother Chris, I'm going to ask you this because, you know, um, where, where two or three are gathered in his name that he will be in the midst. Praise him. Hey. Did, did that sound, did that sound deep? Yeah, you are deep as hooked today. I'm, I'm just Jesus. basking in your glory today. Hey Amen. Go on and bask in Jesus. Yes. Go on and bask in Jesus. <laughs> so, so, Brother Chris, you know, um, tell me how it is to uh, work with these two gentlemen as well as, could you tell me the time where they was in the studio, and this is a rumor, just, they was in the studio. Not a rumor. Yes, a rumor. And they start fighting over the last piece of chicken. I just want to know if you could tell me about that time. The sanctified um, bird. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, let's start with the first question. Um, working with the guys is a is a is a blessing to me personally. Um, just being able to uh, understand their vision, hear their vision, know their authentic selves, know who they are, and then as management try to bring that vision to uh, to life is is just a blessing to me. Um, I don't remember the time um, when they fought for chicken. Um, being that Anton is a vegan, mm -hmm. he's not ever fighting for anything that's moving unless it's his body. Come on, somebody. <laughs> or, or, the, or the Holy Ghost moving. Or the Holy Ghost. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't remember that time. Right. Now, now, now who's a vegan? Anson. That would be me. Yeah. Okay, Anson, you know, yeah. I, I want you to know that um, I'm going to send you um, the 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 address so you go get you some vegan chitlins, you know. Uh, oh, it's, oh, it's, that's it's okay. in Chicago. It's a it's vegan a vegan chitlins. It's, it's a vegan. It's kosher too. It, it's it's <laughs> it, it's in uh, Chicago. They got a okay. vegan restaurant that sells vegan chitlins. I've heard, actually I've heard about I've heard about See? that. I have no interest in doing it, but I, you know, I appreciate, I appreciate people's creativity. You know, people, it's brilliant. people are so creative. Yeah. You, you know, what's so funny about, cause I was a vegan for about a year, you know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. And it, it was a wonderful experience. Um, it was easier when you have vegans around you. Cause you know, you can always eat where they eat and everything like that. But the funniest thing is, is that I love to talk about chitlins, so I don't eat them. And so I made a mm -hmm. comment one time that um, I was going to send some vegan, vegan kosher chitlins to somebody, and they all bet me that there was nothing like that in in the world. And so I just mm -hmm. pulled up the restaurant, and I said, everybody bring on your offering on in, because I said I had to prove <laughs> you wrong. So why did you become a vegan? Uh, number one, uh, I just, uh, I think it was 2010, Around 2010, I was, uh, my health was, I was doing well with my health, getting, you know, getting fit. You know, I had been getting fit over since maybe 2000, 2001, just really, really working on my fitness. And, uh, and it was, 
I had stopped eating a lot of meat because I was, it was just not working well with my system. Mm -hmm. It just didn't, you know, I noticed I'd eat things and I was just like, this doesn't feel good. Mm -hmm. So I ended up watching a documentary and it was like New Year's Eve 2009 or something like that. And that night I watched the documentary. I said, oh, I'm done. I'm done. That's it. You know, all the negative aspects of, yeah. of eating, eating, <laughs> eating meat. Uh, it was just, it was a wrap for me. So from that point forward, I was like, I'm done with that. And I, you know, it was just like a great, a great part of, it's been a great part of my life. Uh, and I, I appreciate the respect, you know, the respect for my brother and, and, mm -hmm. uh, and his family and, and, and others, you know, for respecting my wishes and, right. and, uh, not trying to, not trying to tempt me with anything because I can't, I can't be tempted with with the devil's food. Now, well, come well, on, come well, on. Well, well, well I, I gotta ask this question. <laughs> that was a nice jab. I, I, I gotta ask this question because, you know, uh -huh. um, I was good all the way until Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I, and I ordered, ordered, uh, a, a vegan tur turkey loaf. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. when I tell you when it came in, you know, and you know, I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to really think outside the box. So I ordered the vegan turkey, and I also mm -hmm. ordered the vegan ribs, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, I'm gonna have the ribs before Thanksgiving, uh -huh. and then I'm gonna have the the turkey for Thanksgiving, right? Uh -huh. Them ribs that that they sent me from the supposed to be the main vegan place in the world. You know, I had so to good. rebuke it, and I backslid and went over. He backslid. With, I went right back over there with Eric, and I said, Eric. Eric, these ain't ribs, and I had to, oh, and they Lord. received me. They received them, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I, I mean, I love my meat eating people, my, you know, the the folks that, you know, but they'll take anybody, honestly. <laughs> <It's> in, <no. laughs> so, so this before before we move on, I got to get you hooked up on the James Jazzy Jordan Health and Wealth Show because he's been a okay. vegan all yeah. for he over forty that. years. Yeah, and no, and you, you remember Jazzy Jordan. Uh, mm -hmm. um, so we got to get you on his show uh, so y'all oh, can really go in on this whole yeah, let's thing do it. and everything let's like that. It. But I just want to ask my last question for you as a vegan, because, see, true vegans uh, mm -hmm. don't wear anything leather. They, mm -hmm. they they don't wear leather belts. So he's a they member of PETA, too? So, so I just want to know, do, 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 do mm -hmm. you wear leather shoes or leather belts? I I have some that I have not relinquished. Come on. Testify. I haven't purchased any okay. since I've been vegan. Okay. But I have not let go of some of the some like some good good pair of shoes Come that on. I had that I've had. I've re put sold back on you know because I was like, oh, these are some good shoes. Right. But uh, no, like I have, I don't buy anything now that that is uh, that is that is leather or anything like that, and not knowingly. You know, doing doing stuff like that. So okay, so we're gonna we're gonna let you stay on the v side, not right. the whole vegan right. side, because you you know you, you know when you really vegan, they they I mean it's right. like oh, it's like serious. being in a fraternity, you know. Oh, so yeah. he's vegan. He's vegan. He's not vegan. There, right. there, you, go. Yeah. there you go. Now, Mr. Eric, <laughs> let's talk about yeah. some of your other music that you've produced and written that's not quote unquote gospel, but it's good music, and God made everything Amen. good. Amen. Mm. Everything. Amen. So, <laughs> if he if he made it, it's good. That's right, we saying. mess it up. So um, yeah, oh, I, okay. I've done a lot of stuff. You know, there's you know, there's a wall back there. Some of it. Look at know. God. But mm -hmm. I, you know what? What I what I attributed to is God being faithful to His promise to me and um, allowing me to use my gift in. All, all sorts of places like, um, and even, even, you know, growing up in church, mm -hmm. um, getting the understanding of what, what true, um, witnessing and discipling means. Like you have to go out, like you, everybody's not made to be in the church. You know what I'm saying? And I'm, I'm, I'm an advocate for not preaching to the choir. So mm -hmm. a lot of the stuff that I do is just God opening doors for me and me moving in places and being a light in those mm -hmm. places where, you know, where light wouldn't be. So um, some people ask me, how do you, how do you balance right and secular and, 
and being a gospel artist is like, well, honestly, I, I look at my gift as something that God has allowed me to um, give away. You know, that's what a gift, the definition of a gift is. Mm -hmm. You give it away and he's allowed me to just be, you know, excellent in those areas. Um, and I love it. It is my occupation, not my salvation. Come on. So I don't, I don't let the two get in, in the way of each other. So, um, and living the life in front of them, they see, they know what the difference is. When I walk into a room, you know, I have people that I've worked with. I mean, A-list artists that won't smoke, they won't drink. They, they try not to use profanity in front of me. And then, you know, I'm, I'm just a, such a regular guy. I'm like, listen, don't be a hypocrite in front of me. Like, right. if you do it outside, you know, I'm not a judge. You know, I don't have a heaven or hell to push you in. But I'm just saying, this is how I live my life. And, um, you know, it's it's evident in front of people. And, and God's going to continue to allow me in those spaces as long as I'm being obedient to him. I believe your faithfulness to God has allowed him to open doors outside of. If we can be Absolutely. faithful, if we can be faithful in church and be faithful over a few things, I really believe that God knows who he chooses to do specific assignments. Um, like people like Yolanda, people like Kirk, yeah, yeah. people like Mary Mary. He places them in those places on purpose and people have been saved, people have been prayed for in the secular world. People have mm -hmm. wanted to commit suicide, but by them being there in the right place at the right time, God has got the glory. Absolutely, absolutely. And I believe that that's, that's, um, that's my calling. Um, aside from what me and Anson do, I think I'm, I was called to be in those places and, you know, be an example and even a, a, a confidant, uh, you know, I got artists that will confide in me like about what's going on in their lives and, you know, I'm able to witness to them or pray for them in those moments. And it's, it's a, it's a game changer. Like I, I have, I have relationships with probably 90% of the people that I've worked with over the past 30 years. So. so, so one of the things that, you know, I just got asked the question, was that a robotic camera that you rolled up and rolled back? Did, did, did you remote control? Well, you know, that? I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a techie techie. So I got stuff that, you know, man, he, man, is, man, he man, is too, man, man, I, I ain't seen that one. You gonna have to send me a shot of that one. Cause I saw it just roll up and roll back. I was like, Oh, that's impressive. Impressive. <laughs> let, 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 me, let me ask you this question. You know, um, um, I like how you said that's your profession uh, or your uh, your profession that you do. And um, I love the fact that, and this is where I'm at in the music industry, and this is where I'm at in life, and that is simply this. You know, we have people that are police officers that are in the military, and their job is to def uh, protect and, and to serve and to defend the country. Mm -hmm. And that means at times that they have to take someone's life. Mm -hmm. You know, we have people right. that are in all different walks of of life, but it seems like when it comes down to music, we in the church world feel like we can't be in other spaces and still be a light. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Um, and we can't uh, uh, do great music and still be a light, not realizing that um, um, because music is universal and because we need to make sure that there's a certain anointing that comes off of the music mm -hmm. that is important that we have believers that are in the mix of this so that we can, our ear gates are hearing something that is better than this, the trash that a lot of people just put out. Mm -hmm. And um, what, I, what I've loved about you is that um, our program director says, Eric has worked alongside some of the biggest names in rock, pop, R&B, and more. You got a lot of people talking about you all on here and at no point did nobody say that you weren't saved. At no point did nobody say that you were not living a godly life. Mm -hmm. And I think that that is the testament of who you both are. And that is is that you are changing the atmosphere instead of letting the atmosphere change you. That part. That part. And, you know, I would challenge anybody, any Christian, any believer to go wake up in the morning and go outside their house and speak like they're reading the Bible. And what I mean by that is like you can't you can't have you can't be here and and not have regular conversations like the songs to me are our only conversation that's all they are like if you listen to people that I, well I'll say the 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 true art of songwriting is really a conversation you're you're trying to get somebody to to listen to what you're saying to believe what you're saying and to be able to relate what you're saying 
relate to what you're saying. So a lot of songs I write are their conversations uh, or, or experiences that a lot of people can relate to. Um, so for me, like you said, like people that have occupations of, you know, I have a, a one of my, my, um, my play uncles, uh, Warren Campbell, my mm-hmm. father, he was from Budweiser for years. Mm-hmm. And he's a pastor. Like he's a, a minister. And he got, he got all kind of flag. Like, how are you going to work for a bigger company? Da, 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 da. Like there's a rabbit hole that people, if they really were serious about, or, or that <clears throat> adamant about being a, a follower of Christ. And they had this ideology that nothing can be outside of the realms of spirituality. You can't go outside your house. Yeah. You get in that car. That car was made by somebody who was probably not a believer. Correct. You know, that that food that you eat is probably manufactured by somebody that supports um, Trump. satanic. Trump. It all kind of, it's all kind of stuff that people just don't know. And they get on, they jump on these bandwagons. Mm-hmm. Meat like, eaters. Not yeah, they're, they're not going to support or they boycott stuff. <laughs> You're stupid. So... <laughs> So they let me ask you this question. They don't know who they're boycotting. Like, it's, it's, right. it's, it's, That's just people that yeah. want to have something to say. Because the same one, you know the, they ain't bought a gospel record or went to a gospel um, concert said, since they yeah, was five yeah. years old. But you, but you love the Lord, but you won't support his people. So, yeah. so one of the things I want to ask is that, you know, we hear about Dawkins and Dawkins, but does Dawkins and Dawkins have any siblings? We do. We have one we sister. Have a sister. So yeah, yeah, she's older, older sister, one older sister. Yeah. Okay. So, so I want to ask when y'all was growing up and, and y'all was in your creative moment, and everything, what role did your sister play, uh, what in, in, in your music career, or in your life? Um, and, um, how, to, how, how have you guys balanced off your careers with your family as a whole? This is interesting because we, you know, we, we like to, we like to mention our sister, but we didn't grow up together, but okay. she is, she's our family. So she didn't really have any, you know, any influence in that area. But uh, I think after uh, we, we, we don't, we use our, we use our family as a, uh, I, I would say as a, as a, as a support, as I mentioned before, as a support system. And they, they are our, our biggest fans. Uh, our dad, before he passed uh, last year, um, in 2022, um, was, you know, the biggest Dawkins and Dawkins supporter. And, um, you know, when he when he passed, you know, we there's there's some of that, you know, some of that that we missed that support that he, you know, being able to share songs with him and, you know, talk to him about that kind of stuff. Um, but, you know, at the same time, the 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 memory and the things that he did while he was here uh concerning us still resonates today and through our mother as well so uh and again we have extended family some of them you know that are are as well musical but some of them that are in different, <coughs> different arenas support us so so well and have over the years and are very proud of us so we're, we're grateful for that you guys have a cousin that's a bad producer too you produce william Demps and some other people. Mm-hmm. So the oil is Devon. in the Dawkins' name. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's a bad, he's a bad brother. I've yeah. talked to him before. He's a bad brother. Cool dude. Very talented, yeah. very talented and gifted in, in, in a lot of areas. Um, but it, it's, it, like Hanson said, it's in our family. Like, we have some cousins that sing. Um, we have some cousins that, that play instruments. Um we have one cousin who we're super, super proud of, not in the music industry, but she's a, a federal judge. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, just yeah that's, that's the cousin I need to meet. You know, I got a, <laughs> had a couple of legal problems I need to work out, you know. And, uh, but anyway. Well, you need, we, you we need to, to get God to help you if you're doing some legal stuff. You know, for, I need you to. I'm rebuking, oh, okay. I'm rebuking this now. Never mind my right own now. business. Um, Rebuke it. Uh, <laughs> let, let, me, let me talk to you guys. Can you take us on a, a just a brief journey on some of your favorite songs up to now? Of ours or other? Of yours. Hmm. I would say for me, one of our favorites, of course, would be the, the first song that we that we actually put out, which was uh, Everybody Needs Somebody. That was just a 
it was just a fun song. It was like the first song that when we when we were uh, presenting a demo to uh, our demo to Fred Fred Hammond, that was the first song he heard, and uh, that kind of that was part of the that was that's what got us in the door. Mm-hmm. So uh, that that's a that's a that's a very uh, meaningful song to to us. That's one. But Eric, you have another. Um, one that's that sticks out. Um, we got a song that was produced by Warren Campbell called "I'll Always Be Around," mm-hmm. and that's that's one of the only songs that we've ever written to each other. You know, as yeah. brothers. I mean, people listen to the lyrics; they see, they know what it's talking about. But that one, that one's a really that's a that's a very important one to me. Um, yeah. um, and we could talk about the ones that that were popular with everybody else that are fun. Like I remember, I'll just say need to know. Everybody knows. Oh yes, Lord. It. That was a good one. We what the first time that we experienced how how big that song is, we were at a, a concert in Kansas City at this big church. I mean, it, it was packed out. They uh, word was they turned away like fifteen hundred people. Wow. Um and so we start singing need to know when I say the entire place was singing along every lyric to the point where we were doing the, this ain't us, but we, we did the oh, hold the microphone out to the audience and let them sing a thing. It was, it was super fun. And I've never forgotten that. And mm-hmm. it, it just got showed the, the magnitude of that song. And that song actually went, that was one of our number ones on billboard. So, um, yeah, that's a that's a big song. We love singing it because even the response when we sing it today. Is, yeah. Uh, well, it's, it's, let me so. let me ask you, let me ask you this question. Then I'll pitch it over to my brother Robert. Um, uh, y'all y'all travel the world. Y'all work with the biggest names in the business. How's home life when you come in? Do you come in on a hoverboard? Do they come and say, "Oh my goodness, <laughs> you're home," and 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 everybody just stops and says, "Wait a minute, they're home." Eric and Anderson is home. How is home life? Listen, I, y'all didn't see in the corner. My son has come in here twice, uh-huh. and I have to, I have to look in my in my my expression. I look to the side and give him that. You see, I'm I'm in here working. Right. He, he, they don't care nothing about none of this. They they appreciate it, but yeah, it doesn't change the fabric or the 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 temperature in the house, mm-hmm. like. I'm just dad. Um, my wife, she, I don't see her gushing over me, but other people see her gushing over me when, when we're like, if she comes to one of our shows, mm-hmm. we, we just, we're regular. And I think that's mm-hmm. because of the way we were raised. So mm-hmm. we don't, we don't demand that when we come in our house, when we come home, when we home, it's like, take out the trash, honey, baby. the honey do list. Take out the trash. Listen, listen, my wife will not pump gas. She will take, She'll take the trash bag out of the trash can and set it by the garage door. She won't take it outside. Like I come home and there's stinky grab garbage right there. Okay, I guess I'm taking it. That's out. your job. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's what we do. And my dad taught us that. We we take care of our wives. Mm-hmm. My wife doesn't have to do anything. So yeah, we yeah. we regular husbands, men at home. So so Anson, a- Anson ain't said nothing. He just like yeah, that that's your story. What, 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 yeah. <laughs> See, my you know, well, my 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 daughters are, are grown, yeah. so you know, my my youngest daughter is still still at home. But it's funny, funny, quick an- anecdote. Uh, my uh, I went down to L.A. the other day. We 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 did a uh, did a did a show down there the other day, and I left, and I was only gone three days three days and I got, I was on the way back into town. I was on the plane. I sent a text to my daughter. I said, Hey, can you pick me up from the airport? <laughs> and she, she said, you, where you gone? You know? So it was wow. just like, she didn't even know I was gone. Wow. She was like, and she kept reiterating that, you know, even when she picked me up, I didn't even know you were gone. When did you leave? Where did you go? You know, so it was just, but we had talked about her, but she's got her own, she's, she's 25. She got her own, she's doing her own thing. thing she's doing. 
you know, but my wife on the on on the other hand is always always happy to see me, always very um uh, very supportive. She she does gush. I see her gush. Other people see her gush. It's just like it's 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 not you know we don't live in a perfect world. Nothing is perfect. Right. But at the same time, you know, it's what what we try to do is be be great husbands, uh, great friends, mm -hmm. uh, and great listeners. So that's what that's what happens. You know, when we you know that that's what kind of keeps things rolling in a good in a good way. My wife knows that I'm gonna listen when she's when she wants to talk you know she she gives me she gives me all the stuff that's going on whether it be work whether it be with her family whether it be whatever you know so i i appreciate that i i'm, I'm grateful for that honestly well, well you know i'm i'm gonna laugh because i'm gonna interpret that wow y'all's houses must be so big that, that that your daughter was on the west wing and didn't even know she didn't even come over to the south wing to come see daddy so she didn't even know you was gone yes look at gone won't he do it won't yes. he do it yeah yes yes west wing right now, down the hall right. now chris how long have you managed them and what are some of the highlights that you've experienced thus far being with them um my management journey with the guys is interesting. Uh, I started off as a road manager uh, a couple of years ago, and um, there was a, a few things that I just, you know, saw that needed to be done. I stepped in and, and did it, and the guys were like, "Hey, um, you, you're doing all this stuff. Why don't you just, you know, take on the management role?" Um, some of the highlights uh, of that is, of course, the number one. Um, the number one billboard single, uh, Come By Here, from the guys. Uh, watching them record this this new music, and, and, and I know the fans are waiting. Listen, <laughs> watching them record this new music and hearing them pour their heart into their work behind the scenes, not the stuff that happens in front of the, uh, the scene, but the stuff that happens behind the scenes, the the authenticity again what they say they are they are behind the scenes Very not, important. not just in front of the camera those are some of the highlights that i see in them every day and being able to just share um their journey with them you know share you know they talk about their family share their you know uh his uh eric's son parker calls me uncle Sarat. you yeah. know when i see parker light up when i come in the room that that that's like th those types of things are uh, precious to me. It's not just what they do in front of the right. uh, camera, it's what they do behind the scenes. We heard about the LA concert he's probably referring to that you guys did recently. Um, my cousin John DeCure, or Tanya DeCure was there. And mm. John DeCure is a good friend of Eric's. That Talks about my, you all the time. I, but I heard y'all turned that yeah, LA scene yeah, upside down. Yeah, you know, we, we had fun. We had fun because, you know, it's, this season that we're in that we've been in for a little bit we don't do a lot of a lot of concerts or a lot of appearances but when we do it the energy is always amazing when the, the energy in this room particularly was uh it made us feel good it, it it relaxed us it was a smaller intimate setting for the um for uh for what it was mm -hmm. but the energy felt like there was a 2,000, 3,000 people in there. Um, and they they received us like like we've been gone for 20 years and they just was waiting. When are y'all coming out? It's a, people people are like, when they see dogs and dogs, it's like a spotty, like a sighting mm -hmm. or something. Like, yo, I, I saw dogs and dogs the other day. I don't, I, I don't oh, know if it, No, you didn't. didn't. Like them. <laughs> right, right. Like, you ain't seen no dogs and dogs. Like, but uh, but they give us so much love and and it feels good to have that type of support from people that are always gonna rock with us. Like even some of the band members were some of the first band members that we had back in back in the day. Like um, Mike Burrell and Bennett Pacinger. Yes, mm -hmm. actually part of the band that played for us at that, that, that mm -hmm. show. So it was yeah. really good. Well, I'm gonna I'm deal with my beef. And you I, got a beef today. Yeah, I got. And you've been spiritual and all that good for, stuff. Now for, you're back to being for, you for, again. For, 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 okay. We accept you for who you are. I'm gonna ask you to stop interrupting me. Come on. You know, praise <laughs> the Lord. 
Let me just deal with my beef. And you do what your beef and get out. Let me just deal with my beef and I'm going to be uh, fine. Because you almost make me forget my beef. So what? Well, maybe that's the Holy Ghost. No, no, no. That Through me. Is, 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 <laughs> Through me. No, no. He ain't using you this the morning. Okay. You, know, you off. You off. Okay. All right. So let me, let me, here's my beef. My, my, my beef is, number one, I didn't get, get invited to the concert. But, you know, it's okay. I'm, I'm going to be okay with that. Um, because we're right down the street yeah, yeah, in San Diego. But my beef oh, is no. um, the relationship our program director have with you two. Because every time y'all come out with anything, yep. Dawkins and Dawkins got something coming out. We go, I'm like, so, <laughs> I, I mean, when I tell you, now she happens to be my wife, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And, and <laughs> she loves Dawkins and Dawkins. And one of the things that's funny is that I, I find that people that didn't grow up in church mm -hmm. gravitated to you guys super duper quickly, and then the church came along uh, aside them. But the folks that didn't grow up in church and just love good music mm -hmm. gravitated mm -hmm. to you guys really quickly mm -hmm. and became really supportive of mm -hmm. what you were doing. Being that we're an urban label, you know everything mm -hmm. that you guys came out with from day one. It, it didn't matter if it was side A, side B, or whatever. It was getting ready to get played because of the the quality. They're consistent. And uh, of the music, mm -hmm. so my 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 mm -hmm. thing is, I want to uh, for from program directors to on airs to everybody else, people have a love affair with your music. Mm -hmm. Tell us mm -hmm. how how does that impact you? That when you, when people hear, they don't care. If you, you know, and watch this, as Christians, we'll be honest, right? As Christians, we know that one of the Dawkins brothers done produced something that's secular. We listening to it because y'all still family. And it sounds gospel. -y. You know what I'm saying? So how does it feel for <laughs> you all to know that no matter where y'all go, your team is rocking with you? Yes. It's so cool. It's so, it's, it's really, um, it, it feels really good. The, the, the thing about it is we, as being, being kind of pioneers in, in the industry. Um, we had people that came before us that were doing, you know, doing things that, you know, would, would, would raise the bar and, and, and stretch the parameters and everything, tear down some walls. And we jumped on that and, you know, to create room for other people. Um, and now it's, you know, now it's a whole, you got a whole genre that's, that's doing, Stuff that we, you know, mm -hmm. stuff that we were doing mm -hmm. and following in the, in that path, and I think one of the one of the cool things about it is that um, we don't have, you know, it, it kind of takes takes the gatekeepers out of the, you know, out of the mix, mm -hmm. because that's why that's why a lot of a lot of this, you know, maybe maybe non gospel folks, you know, kind of gravitated and were easily could easily jump on. You didn't have people that were at church gatekeeping and saying, oh, you can't listen to this. Mm -hmm. This is not gospel and putting labels on, on what we were doing. So I think, you know, the labels, are, the labels are falling off and uh, we have people like, you know, stations like, like yours that are just amazing, amazingly supportive. And it just gives us great joy to be able to continue to, to bring music, to bring uh, to bring creativity that that uh, that is always that is always supported by you guys. We love it. Let me let me say this, and this will tell you how far. Um, and we love your wife director, too. So, our program director <laughs> Evangel, she said she says this. I made mixtapes for my unsaved friends with their Ooh. music because she needed them to know that the Saints had it bumping too. And uh, yeah. so, uh, uh, y'all, y'all go back, y'all mixtapes, not, not, not CDs, yes. mixtapes. I'm here, I'm here for it. Before <laughs> mixtapes was a thing, we was mixtapes. Now, who's yes. the oldest? I am. I am. Yes. Yes. We're eleven. We're eleven. Eleven months apart. Eleven months and three weeks. And where are you guys from originally? Davenport, Iowa. They got black people in Iowa. We left. Okay. Right. Okay. <laughs> Population went down right, to right. zero. They left. I am Davenport. <laughs> I think my friends Jimmy Terrell, James Terrell, and them came from there. It was a big family of musicians mm. from that area. Went okay. to Grambling yeah, State. We still, have, we still have family there. So um, yeah, and that's the one of the people. One of the things people say all the time when they hear people from Davenport, they're like, "This is black people." It's like, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's 
there's a bunch of black people there. Quad City areas. Um, I don't know if you all know Michelle and Clyde Duffy. Yes, um, they're, they're doing yeah, well <laughs> from the Quad Cities. So we we have that in common, and they're they're really really close friends of ours as well. Um, mm -hmm. we, we didn't find that out until much later on. Right. You know, when mm -hmm. we leave our story, we say we're from Davenport. They were like, "Are you serious? We're from the Quad Cities. Why are we represent that?" Right. Right. That? So. Um, Somebody yeah. want to know if did y'all grow up coaching? No, no. We, didn't. we were we were we were apostolic Pentecostal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, was y'all with the PAW? Huh? Was y'all with PAW? PAW. Yeah. PAW. Uh oh, yeah. they PAW. Yeah. Well, yeah. all right, PAW. We, we, we all get along now because we coaching used to be with the with the PAW. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> Funny story. My dad was a Pentecostal prep. Preacher, yeah, and my mom was coaching. I had, he, I had oh, a feeling. He, he gave her an ultimatum, like you need to come over here, or we can't be together. Well, she brought yeah. she brought some sanctification and holiness with her too, so it's, it's yeah. a twinkle, a twinkle of both of them. Hallelujah! <laughs> I, I, just, I just want you to know, you, you, we got roots from both places. Yeah. Right, right, right. You your, got the fullness. Your, your mama looked at him and she said, "You know, I'm taking." The Lord long with me everywhere I go, <laughs> and I know the Bible's right. And somebody's wrong. So because of that, I'm going to come. <clears throat> but just let you know yes. that I know where Right, my... <laughs> right, right. Now, now, how'd you guys get hooked up with Fred coming from Iowa? Did you guys move somewhere else, or you just made a name of being good musicians and you play for commission? How did that start? Well, we, uh, we ended up moving from Iowa to Tennessee. And we were in Tennessee for about 10 years. My dad started pastoring there. And then we left Tennessee and moved to Ohio. And when we moved to Ohio, of course, we, you know, we were only five hours or so from Detroit. Detroit. And <laughs> the year, I think the year that we moved to, uh, that we, no, it wasn't, it was, I think the year that we moved to Ohio, Commission actually came out that year with mm -hmm. their with their stuff so we ended up becoming huge commission fans and as we became commission fans we would go to wherever they would wherever within a couple of hours you know we would go to their shows mm -hmm. and we got to meet the guys several times but then there was a there was a lady that went to our church there in uh steubenville and fred's uh fred had an aunt that was in uh wintersville so uh, we, you know, through these connections mm -hmm. and everything, this friend took us to actually, you know, to a show and we actually met him there and it was a little, got a little more personal. But then when we uh, started playing for, we went to play for a young lady that was, that was in Detroit, that was working with Fred, went to play and sing background for her. And we took the demo at that particular time. And she was like, hey, we need to get this, let Fred hear this. Right. She drove us to Fred's house, sat in, sat in Fred's living room, put the tape in, bing. Oh, okay, we need to be doing this like yesterday. Right. You know, that was that was that was how it rolled. So that's how we really got connected. And and Fred in turn uh made made an executive decision and you know got us involved with uh, with the band with uh, actually playing and singing uh for commission and you know got us in writing for his first project wow. and si singing backgrounds of his first project and then getting a you doing commission seven project so you know it was like and being on the road it was just that's how we got in and in the process we got our deal and started started recording and then we read our wings it, it was Ooh. meant to be it was meant to be because yes, those things don't happen yeah. that much where yeah. Artists are that friendly and that not right. friendly in in personality wise, but allowing you all to get deals. Andre Crouch did yeah. that for the Winings and did it yeah. for the Hawkins, but it's rare to find people doing it these days. Yeah, and so, we yeah. didn't say we we were both in college. Anton was mm -hmm. pre med. I was a mechanical engineer major. Smart. Um, so we were like, we had other ideas about our career path. We were going to be doing music because that's what we did. Um, mm -hmm. But got the opportunity. We were both, I think Anson was two and a half years in. Yeah. I was two years in and got the opportunity with Fred. We were like, 
okay, school. Deuces. Boom. And we got the opportunity. We've been doing music ever since. What, what schools? Deuces. What university did you go to? Anson was at Youngstown State. I was at Youngstown State University. I've heard, got a good That's basketball school. And I went to a community college in the in the town that we lived in because I was like, you know, let me get my hands on like experience and mm-hmm. like a little more intense. So, so my question is, uh, before we get to your music, we we gonna have to have a, a to be continued. Yeah, this is amazing. Uh, uh, with this, you know, um, I wanted to talk to the young Dawkins. Uh, uh, and mm. and ask the young Dawkin is is he gonna follow in Daddy's footsteps or or mm. he or he just gonna be on the TV saying look Daddy get off the get off the Zoom you ask I want so, some, I want to talk to you so ask the young Dawkin uh, are you gonna go and follow in Daddy's footsteps I think so <laughs> good okay. good answer a good good answer <laughs> now let let me let you on a little secret D- Daddy and Uncle got a whole bunch of friends and they got a whole bunch of toys. In a studio that you can play with and learn how to do it, but you know your daddy gonna probably look at you like uh, Barry Gordy did Michael Jackson sitting there. If I tell him how much it cost, then he'll know <laughs> the importance. He'll know the importance, and right, he'll, he'll right. take care of it better. Right. <laughs> but uh, we want you to know that we love your dad yes. and your uncle. Legends, and, uh, legends, they, legends. They have made an amazing impact in music in general, and we pray over you, young man, that. Whatever God has in store for you, mm-hmm. uh, that you will be blessed, and that we will give you the same support as we give your family. So just keep on yeah. smiling, keep on learning, and bring home the grades. All right. That part. Yeah. Then, then he's brilliant as well. He plays piano. Yeah. See. Um, and he sings. Sings. Yep. So, uh oh. And drum. Uh oh. So we got we got we got one coming up. Like, and he's around it all the time. Like yeah. that. And that's one of yeah. the reasons I chose. To have my studio at home, uh-huh. so he, I mean, he's welcome to come in here and, and soak it up as much as possible. So he's been doing that since a very young age. Now, is his name Parker? His name is Parker. Okay, Parker the Allen. people just talking about Parker's so sweet. My cousin Tanya the Cure said it. <laughs> oh, they love, they love Parker. Right. Yeah. Parker, he was almost like a little little baby mascot at our church, and and they would come over. You know, they're really good friends with our pastor. Right. Um, yeah, he's been he's been that kid since he was born. So now, now, Chris, Chris, this is your new your new station. We are a media based station, Sound Exchange, heard in seventy one countries. We want the first dabs of everything that they do when they're doing concerts in L A. We in San Diego. Send us a bone. We'll, we'll drive. We will even buy our own ticket. Now, if you want to put us on your list, we can do that too. But we'll buy a ticket. We plant seeds. <laughs> I, I need the whole already, chicken. Already done. Say less. I need the whole chicken. Don't send me a bone. Send me a whole chicken. No. You know, it oh, can be man. vegan, though. It can be vegan. We're trying to be like Anson. I have answers to that. <laughs> no, 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 see. Anson, even Jaw, he runs and stuff. Him see, and Yolanda ought to do a marathon together. Yeah, I, I ain't going to, all I'm going to say is simply this. You know, I'm not all things to all people, but uh, uh, Anson, when you come down to San Diego, I got the spots for us. You know, okay. and we're going to eat good. You know, and watch this. He gonna eat good and, for that and, day, cause he and, ain't being no, no, no sh- vegan again. Don't no, be trying to wait, perpetrate. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. See, it's, you you missing the point. Mm-mm-mm. I'm saying we're gonna eat good. Now, I didn't say I was look, gonna look eat good Eric. for everything. Okay. You know, what I'm saying, but me and Anson, we are gonna eat good. Yeah, you trying to Eric perpetrate? Eric gonna come, and, mm-hmm. and Chris is gonna come, mm-hmm. and then you know, so you are gonna pick your food from the garden that you planted in your backyard. Praise him. Now, now, now <laughs> Robert. See, now I just want y'all to know. Um, uh, that I'm praying for him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, he came in this morning telling telling stories about he on time. But we I said leave. I was on time for this. <laughs> no, you didn't. Oh, that's okay. Throw me <laughs> under the bus. This, God, God got me. No. Hallelujah. This, this, this is who we are, brothers. We, we, we love you. We love want him. you to know that uh, we're excited about <laughs> your new music and yeah. we want to continue to be a blessing uh, to the people that tune into the station, 71 countries uh, to date. We're still, we're still growing this station. Uh, Can we get him here? Can we get him here for a concert since we promote all the biggest concerts in San Diego? Absolutely. Absolutely. We we didn't have Mary Mary. We didn't have Yolanda. We didn't have Karen, the Clark Sisters reunion. We didn't have everybody. They, we, we can have them too. I'm yeah, just putting I, it out I, there. I, I get it. Since, since I'm the since I'm the yeah. mouthy one and, and messy I, one today. I want y'all to know, uh, you know, my 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 being sick today mm-hmm. is because they never let me rest. Every day oh. they give me an assignment and everything like that. 
Robert got 20 emails that he's like saying, since you're my manager, you know, but then he just added another one. And now you got people saying, amen. So now it's an assignment that I got to get it done. And they got new you know? music out and stuff. They got a book coming but, but, out. But it's okay. They got all that stuff. I'm going to go get me some mm -hmm. vegan food and I'm going to be good to uh, get back in. And For we're that gonna make day. This, we're going to make it happen. For that day. Mm -hmm. But could you all talk about this new track that we have, uh, <laughs> That's Love. And yes, we will, we will work on with your manager uh, to get you all here in San Diego on one of the uh, events that we have coming up. Yes, sir. So if you guys could talk about the song "That's Love," um, it's a there's actually a backstory to this song. I uh, did a master class uh, a couple of years back, well, several years back, and one of my students in that class actually wrote and produced that song. I wrote it with them, um, but uh, they were sending me songs to critique as part of one of the assignments. And I heard this one song, and I was like, "Oh wait, 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 wait a minute! That I think this this might be this might be for our new project because we were in, at the moment we were working on a new project." Um, I sent it to Anson. He heard it and he he agreed. So what I did was I ended up um, asking her for the track because I you know I had to make up a little thing like I'm to critique. I want to hear it, like just separate it out and stuff so I can have the track and you know. Um, so I ended up cutting me and my brother on the song. So, and we, we finished writing it. Um, but when I played it in the class, it was for like, I would play the songs back to them and critique them real time with the students and stuff. And so I played her version of it. And then right after that, I played our version of it. Didn't tell her, nobody knew that I was doing it. So when it started playing and she heard our voices, her face just like, like she didn't know what was happening. I'm just sitting there smiling. And Anson actually came in that zone on the, in the classroom. And so when the song finished, I was like, I just want to make the announcement in front of everybody in front of the class. This song is officially going on the Dawkins and Dawkins new project. And it was just a whole thing. Like, wow. and, um, but you know, just the, just the, the, um, the concept of the song It's it's us. I mean, we, we talk about love all the time and, you know, having that, the perfect love of Jesus Christ is, you know, it, it's a, it's an umbrella for all other love. So, um, and you could, people use it. They, they call it an R&B song because, you know, you can talk about the love that you want to find in a, in a mate uh, or in a friendship. So um, it's, we, we're, we're really promoting love, 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 love. God is love. So why not? Just make everything about love. That's what it should be anyway. Now, now, now can I, can I send you a song I wrote called "Shh, You Late"? Shh. <laughs> it's, it's, Shh, you late? Right, right, right. <laughs> right. I was just not here on time. You late? <laughs> he, he has a James Cleveland spirit. Shh. That's the James Cleveland ministry. <laughs> So let me ask you this. How can people connect with you, uh, follow you, all of the above? And then oh, we're going to play this song. And then we're going to circle back around and get y'all back on. Because we're going to drop. Every time you drop, we're going to be with you. So yes. uh, how can they connect? Love it. Love it. We are uh, on uh, all social media platforms at Official d, &D Music. And uh, whether it be Instagram, you got Facebook, we have a YouTube Ooh, page as well. TikTok. TikTok. So just check us out. That's where you find out the information that's going on, what's happening with us. And we'd love to connect. We'd love to connect. Well, y'all, it's been a fun interview. Uh, we're going to call these our cousins. You know, uh, we'll call it cousins, the Dawkins and Dawkins uh, brothers. We, we want to thank you. Chris, thank you so much, man, for being the amazing manager and yeah. man of God that you are. Yes. Brothers, we want to thank you all so much for Letting us just be ourselves with you all. Parker, we want to send our love to you, young man. Uh, uh, thank you for joining in with us. This is your daddy and your uncle's new track that we have. It's called That's Love right here on GLD Radio 1.com.